Hello, welcome to Learn Swift for Beginners, Lesson 8. In the previous lesson, you learned about functions, how to declare them, and how to call them. In this lesson, you're going to learn how to use them in an even more powerful way by having your functions accept data and also return data to you when you call them. All right, let's see how that's done. So here I have a fresh playground. If you forget how to open up a new playground, just go back to lesson one of this series and you can see how. Now there's one thing I want to mention before we move on that I forgot to mention in the previous video, and that is that sometimes I may accidentally say method. And when I say method, I actually mean function. Now I noticed that a lot of other Swift teachers also do this. And the reason for this is because for many uh, Swift educators like myself, Swift isn't our first programming language. And in many of the programming languages out there, there is some concept of a function. And sometimes they're called functions, sometimes they're called methods, and sometimes even other things. So a lot of the educators out there when they're teaching, sometimes they're going to slip up and they're going to say method instead. So I just want to put it out there. If you hear me say method, uh, just know that sometimes I use function and method interchangeably. Okay, so we're going to start by just redeclaring that function that we had in the previous lesson, and I want to redeclare it just for extra practice for you guys. So I think it was something like um, add two numbers like this, and it was let a equals one, let b equals one, and let c equals a plus b, and then we're going to print c just like that. Now in the previous lesson, I mentioned that functions are great for kind of organizing your little bits of code into um, pieces of code that perform one task. So in this case, um, this function would add the two numbers together and then it would print out that sum in the console. But what if I wanted the function to just add the two numbers but don't print it out? I just want the result. So in fact, functions have something called a return value and it's exactly how it sounds. When you execute the function, it returns a value to you. So let's take a look at what the syntax is for specifying that a function returns a value. So everything remains the same as our basic function definition, but after the two rounded brackets, you have an arrow. That arrow is just comprised of a hyphen and a greater than sign. And followed by that, you have the data type of the value that this function should return. So now that you specified that this function returns a value, you have to use the return keyword inside of that function to actually return a value of that same data type that you specified. So now let's go back to our playground and see how this applies to the function that we have there. So let's say that for this function, I don't want to print out the sum, instead I wanted to return the sum to me. I would then erase this print statement first of all. After the rounded brackets, I would put hyphen, greater than sign, and then I would put int, specifying that this function should return an int data type. Now Xcode immediately throws an error here because it notices that I uh, don't have the return keyword. I'm not returning uh, an integer value like I said I would. So what I would have to do actually to fix this is use the return keyword and I'm going to return C because that's the sum of A and B. So now when I call add two numbers like that, it actually returns C. Now let me show you something here. So when I type that autocomplete, it shows you the return value right there. It tells me that add two numbers actually returns an integer like that. So what I would do essentially is I would probably uh, declare a constant and let's call it sum and I would say equals add two numbers. What's happening here is that I'm calling this function add two numbers and this function is returning C as in the sum of one plus one and I'm assigning that value into this constant called sum. So now if I print sum like that I would get two. So this constant sum, it stores the returned value from my function here. So one more thing I can do up here, instead of 
declaring this constant c equals a plus b and then returning c, I could actually get rid of this constant and I could just return a plus b like that. And that would actually take a and b, add them together, and then return it. So that's return values for functions. And this is really powerful because now you can um, write a function that does something and returns the result to you. So your function is kind of like um, a little worker or a piece of code that does a specific task and then returns you back the result. Now there's another cool thing that you can do with functions and that's called parameters. See this function by itself, add two numbers, it's always just going to add one and one together and return two to me. But what if I wanted this piece of code to be reusable for any type of numbers? I want to specify which two numbers I want to add together. So essentially what it is, is when I declare this function, I can specify in between these two rounded brackets. See, I mentioned in the previous video that we would use this. In between these two rounded brackets, we can specify that this function needs some input parameters in order to execute. So let's say that I'm going to de declare this function and say that when you call this function, you need to give me two numbers as inputs. Now, when I call the function here, I would have to specify two numbers in between these rounded brackets. Okay, so before we actually do it, let's go take a look at what the syntax looks like for declaring these uh, input parameters. So this syntax right here shows you what the function definition would look like for a single parameter. Now we're gonna get to multiple parameters, but this is an example of a single parameter uh, function declaration. So in between the two rounded brackets, you have an argument label, okay? I'll explain to you in a second what that is. And then you have a parameter name, followed by a colon, and then followed by the data type of the parameter you're accepting. Now let's talk about the parameter name colon data type part first. So obviously the colon data type part of that specifies what sort of parameter you're going to be passing into the function and the parameter name is going to be the name of that parameter you use within the function. So if I wanted to take that input and I wanted to add it to something and I wanted to reference that value that was passed in, I would use the parameter name, okay, inside the function. Now the argument label for that parameter is what is going to be shown when you call that function. I know it's a little bit confusing right now, but let's jump into an example uh, so it makes more sense. All right, so back to the playground here. Let's uh, implement one parameter inside our add two numbers function here. So I'm not gonna use any descriptive names right now because I want to show you how uh, the argument label and the parameter name plays out. So I'm going to say add two numbers argument label is um, let's just say arg and then the parameter I'm just going to say para okay and then colon int so this function now accepts a parameter um, that is type of int and then Xcode detects that now this function call is incorrect because we have no function that doesn't accept parameters so one cool thing you can do is just erase that and go um, add two numbers, you can see that autocomplete now recognizes that we have a parameter. So let's double click that and you can see here is the argument label. Let's pass in a number here. Let's pass in, let's pass in two like that. So by specifying arg there as the argument label for the parameter, when I call the function, I'm going to have this label here. Um, if I wanted to use this number that I passed in, remember, you have to use the parameter name. That's for inside the function. So I would reference the value that's passed in using the parameter name like that. So essentially, what I would get here is because I'm passing in 2 and I'm referencing, I'm setting A as 2, right? That's our parameter that just got passed in. Uh, it would be 2 plus 1. So that's what is stored into sum, and when I'm printing sum, 
That's what I expect to get, 3. Okay, that is helpful, but it's not complete. We want to be able to pass in both numbers so that we can specify which two numbers to add together. Let's take a look at the syntax for multiple parameters. So the syntax for multiple parameters is very easy. In the parameter list, that is that stuff between the rounded brackets, you would just put a comma after the first parameter and then essentially repeat the same thing for the second parameter. You'd have an argument label, followed by a space, followed by a parameter name, colon, and then the data type. Now you want to use different argument labels and different parameter names obviously so that you'd be able to tell it apart. Now let's jump back to the playground and add our second parameter. So what I would do in between these rounded brackets in this parameter list is I would just put comma and then I would put my second argument label, my second parameter name, followed by the data type, which is another int. Now again, Xcode is going to throw this error here. Let's use autocomplete again. Add two numbers. You can see here it's been updated to accept two arguments. So argument just arg and arg2. So let's pass in 2 and 2. Now we have to modify um, our code a bit. Right now I'm still getting 3, and that's because inside this function code I'm not using the parameter 2 yet. We can change that like that. So now A gets set to parameter, uh, I mean para, and B gets set to para 2. And then I'm returning A plus B. So now I actually get 4 in here. So one thing we can do with this function is actually we don't need to declare a equals para and b equals para2. That doesn't really do anything. Um, so we can get rid of these two constants here and we can simply return para plus para2 like that. Straight off the bat, now our function is pretty simple. So at this point you might be wondering why is it so confusing that I'm using argument labels here in the function call and then we're using parameter names inside the function code. Um, well, what you can do is you can actually not specify argument labels like that and just have the parameter names. And what it'll do is it's going to use the parameter name both as the argument label and the parameter name. So now um, this is wrong. You can see Xcode here um, has an error. Let's use autocomplete to see what the new function looks like, the new function call. And you can see here that now the argument uh, labels are the parameter names. So we can also change our parameter names at this point. You probably don't want to use para and para2 for your own function, so we can say you know, number one, number two, if we have these as our parameter names, then, you know, this changes as well. Number one, number two, and then our function call would also change like that. Okay. Now you might be wondering why, why use argument labels at all? Like what are they for? Well, using argument labels, you can make your function calls a little more like natural English. So let me show you an example. You can do something like this. Add two numbers. So there's my first argument label and number two like that. So let's take a look at what our new function call would look like. So when I'm calling a function, add two numbers using two and two right you can see how that reads more like natural english and it makes intuitive sense what the parameters are going to be used for meanwhile inside our um our function here if my parameter names were using right or and it, it doesn't make much sense right um you know if i didn't use if i used these as the parameter names like that these would be terrible parameter names because if my function is really long this doesn't tell me anything this doesn't tell me anything it doesn't mean anything to me while this function call still makes a lot of sense when you call it in terms of natural English 
but in in the actual code in here and add two numbers you know adding using an and doesn't really make sense so if you use the combination of argument labels and parameter names that make sense um, you have this function call that is like natural English and makes sense and you also have meaningful parameter names that you can use inside of your function okay so I want to show you uh, one more thing if you don't want to use these argument labels at all uh, what you can do is replace your argument labels with an underscore like that or you can replace one or you can replace both so let me show you uh, what that looks like so I'm gonna replace both the argument labels with just underscore let's take a look at what that looks like now so you can see now that I just pass in two and two like that um, no parameter names no labels no arguments no nothing it's just you pass in the input parameters like this and you, you these are your parameter names so that's what you're going to be using inside of your function okay so just to recap in this lesson you learned about return values you learned about the return keyword and you learned about input parameters and how to specify them what argument labels are what parameter names are and also how to omit argument labels altogether I hope you enjoyed this lesson if you did please give the video a thumbs up it really helps the video get some exposure and please subscribe for more and finally I'll see you in the next lesson bye for now